No, 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 Get used to it. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sonic Attack once again, and today I have yet another mining video for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Ethereum hash rate for the RTX 3060 Ti, and mm, 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 you already know it's good. How good? Well, we're going to talk about it right now. But before that, I like to go ahead and show off products that I use here and there with affiliate links down in the description. That helps me monetize the channel. So use them if you can. They're not sponsors. They're affiliate links. These are products I use. I use YubiKeys. YubiKeys are a hardware multi-factor authentication solution that is better than using a software driven thing like Google Authenticator because to get access to your accounts, you have to have a physical device. So I highly recommend it, especially for all your crypto currency exchange accounts. They support NFC and USB, so you can use them on your phone, no problem. Just hold the key up to your phone, swipe and get those authentication codes. Without further ado, let's get into this. So we have an RTX 3060 Ti. Specifically, this is going to be the EVGA model. So we have the EVGA for the win three edition and it is the gaming. So there is an ultra gaming as well as an XC model. This particular model is somewhere in between, but you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. That's what I tell my kids these days. If you're trying to get graphics cards to mine or game or anything, just pick up what you can and do your best with it. We do guides on this channel, of course, for overclocking and BIOS modding various cards. So just go through the whole, the whole list and find your GPU, figure out what the best settings are. This particular card though, 4,864 CUDA cores with a 1,710 megahertz boost clock and eight gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 256-bit bus with a 14,000 megahertz effective clock, and that is 448 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. The cooling solution on this particular card is the ICX3 cooler, and it is a three-fan design, 2.2 slots, so a little thinner, than say like a 3090, 3080, and so on. It's basically the same cooler that is on the RTX 3070. Now it is PCIe 4.0, but you won't need that for mining. It has an HDMI port and three display ports. It is 4.38 inches tall and 11.23 inches long. And like we said, 2.2 slots, GPU standard slots thick. Now it requires two eight pin PCIe power adapters and the total power draw is 200 watts. And that my friends is what's important because the memory is essentially going to be the same thing that is over on of course the 3070, but because of the reduced amount of CUDA cores, on the actual GPU core, it requires less power to get the same hash rate as the 3070. Unfortunately, it's not quite up there, of course, with the 3080 or of course 3090, but those also use a lot more power. So you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Apparently that's the motto today. So let's talk about performance. Okay, so getting into the nitty gritty here, we have hardware info open, we have MSI open afterburner. Let's talk about my settings. We have the power limit down to 55. We have the temp limit just left it standard right now. With Windows, the lowest you're gonna be able to go on core clock is negative 502. On Hive OS and Linux, I've gotten most of these down to negative 600. That's the 3070, 3080, and 3090. Pretty sure the 3060 Ti will follow suit, so we can probably get even better hash rate over on Hive OS, which we can follow this video up with in a later iteration. And then the memory clock we have at plus 1300 megahertz. And with these settings, let's go over hash rate and power consumption. So first of all, 
Let's go ahead and pop on over to the kilowatt. And as you can see here, if we get it on watts, there we go. We are at about 92 to 100 watts. Usually it's about a, an extra like 10 watts once we start running the miner for the rest of the system. But yeah, right around 90 watts. Okay, so there's that. And then let's pop back over to here and get the miner running. Today we're gonna to be using the latest version of Phoenix Miner 5.5 C. We're gonna start the miner right here. Now we can also do LOL miner in a later video and do some comparisons. I have switched all of my AMD GPUs over to Team Red Miner. They just perform better over there. But Team Red Miner, obviously, it's in the name, it doesn't support nvidia so as you can see right about now we're sitting around 60 mega hash a second we probably have a little bit more room in the memory clock but we want to be conservative at least a little bit and with that you can see over in the hardware info we're at 131 watts is what that reports and then if you take a look over here we are confirming that sitting around 210 to 220 watts Minus, of course, the 90 watts on the system power, giving us a total power draw there of about 130 watts. There's a little bit more room to play with, but this is pretty much how we handle it when we are going over, of course, new GPUs. And then we throw it in and we compare it in the charts to our first runs for our best overclocks on that. So we have a chart coming up now. And that chart is going to basically show you the power consumption to hash rate. And your goal here is to have the highest hash per, of course, watt. So let's go through it. Hey, son. So I just finished up calculations. I needed to redo some things. So with Team Redminer and the new calculations on the AMD cards, which I hadn't redone, initially uh, the chart is finished i did it after or post and interestingly enough the rtx 3060 ti falls behind pretty much every radeon card at this point so if you take a look at the chart now uh, what you have is the rtx 3060 ti being the best amd option as we currently sit at a hash per watt of 0.45 with the 5700 xt micron coming in at 0.5 and even the RX 6800, which right now you can only really run on Windows coming in at 0.5 as well. And then just the 5700 XT Samsung and 5600 XT Micron just destroying everything with a 0.7 hash per watt on Team Red Miner with the BIOS modding on the 5700 XT Samsung. And of course the 0.78 mega hash per sec mega hash uh, per watt on the 5600 XT with the new Team Red Miner, uh, which we were getting down to 55 watts, which is insane. And that was calculated, of course, with the same testing metho methodology that we did on the 3060 Ti. So quick update, wanted to make sure that I corrected that before we went live with the video. Enjoy the rest of the video. Your mileage may vary. And I want to talk about something that maybe a lot of people get confused about if you look at this you're gonna say of course rx 5700 xt samsung memory first problem the likelihood of you picking up a 5700 xt with samsung memory in the current gpu market is very low okay so i don't want you guys to think that you're gonna even have that as an option i bought all mine before this whole craze happened. So I was literally just going to Best Buys and returning cards until I got Samsung memory, okay? I did that very intentionally. Now it's gonna be a lot of whether you get Micron or Samsung. That being said, you're not really that bad off with Micron memory on the 5700 XT. The next thing to note there is that is going to be conditional to your ability to flash and modify the BIOS. And if you don't want to do that, then your best option is going to be the RTX 3060 Ti. 
But once again, I'll say you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I also would encourage you to learn how to BIOS mod and do these various things. Also replacing thermal pads is going to be very important. We're going to be doing a thermal pad replacement video for the 3070, the 3060, and we already have one for, of course, the 5700s and so on and so forth. So we're going to get them all out, show you guys basically on the models that I have where you need to replace the cards. But as it sits, my recommendation for new miners is going to be the RTX 3060 Ti. And my recommendation for veteran miners is going to be trying to hunt down 5700 XTs with Samsung memory. That's kind of where I sit. I am very happy with my 5700 XTs. And they are, you know, their hash per watt is killing it compared to even the 3060 Ti. That being said, 3060 Ti, you plug it in, you turn in, tune the settings, and you're done. I say you're done. If you have a gigabyte model, replace those thermal pads. All right, and then I'll take a look at the thermal pads on these EVGA models and let you know here probably this weekend. But I hope this video is helpful. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next Tuesday.